Acrylamide is formed when you microwave your food. And if it sounds toxic, that's because it is. You have to understand that the human body is not just a biochemical machine, it's also an electrochemical masterpiece. Most people don't know this, but the signals from our brain is not transmitted to the rest of our body through electrical pulses like in a wire, but rather through a system of ion channels and electron pumps. And these store up energy in the form of concentration gradients and they basically use that to transmit a pulse through a series of long cells called neurons. And all this relies on ions like calcium, sodium and potassium. And that brings us to our video sponsor, Element. Now I'm, I'm fucking kidding with you man. But the thing is, these ions, these charged particles are influenced by electromagnetic radiation. I talked earlier about the formation of acrylamide in our food when you heat it in a microwave. But even before that, let's talk about improper shielding. So if you ever listen to music on your Bluetooth headphones, while you use a microwave oven, you might have noticed that there's interference or even disconnection from your device. This is proof that the radiation is not shielded properly. That is to say, electromagnetic radiation is leaking from your microwave oven. And we can assume that there's no problem here, there's no health effect, but what if there is? But talking about the food again, so let's talk about another observation. You probably noticed that when you heat food in a microwave, like some parts of it are ice cold when other parts are superheated. This is the problem which causes the formation of these toxins. So because some parts of the food are heated to an extreme degree, there's chemical reactions which start, which cause the creation of acrylamide and other toxins. So when it comes to the issue of the electromagnetic shielding, the solution is pretty clear. Just step away from your microwave when you're using it. Simply stepping away from the microwave is gonna drastically reduce the electromagnetic radiation that you actually incur. And if you're like four or five steps away from your microwave, that's far enough. But the acrylamide issue is a little bit more complex. It depends on what food it is, how long you've been heating it for and how you actually heat it. So first thing, heating liquids is mostly fine. Heating water, milk, coffee, I have no issue with that. And the reason behind that is because in liquids, the particles are free to move. So as you're heating them in a microwave, there's convection currents which form, which kind of move around the water, move around the liquid, and no part of the liquid gets superheated. And so there's no formation of toxins. But now when it comes to food, especially carbohydrate rich foods. So what's going on is this extra heat, this excess heat, it causes a reaction called the Maillard reaction. And to be fair, Maillard reactions are very common in cooking. And I'm not at all saying that this reaction is always to be avoided. Searing a steak or caramelizing the top of a creme brulee, that's all a form of Maillard reaction. So basically when carbohydrates and amino acids are subjected to extreme heat, you have the potential to create acrylamides. So don't heat carbohydrates in the microwave for too long. And before I even get into that, heating in the microwave is not by any means the only cooking process or only heating process which causes the creation of toxins. Far, far worse is deep frying in seed oils. So if you have french fries and you deep fry them in seed oils, that's far more contaminated with toxins than taking a potato and baking it in the microwave oven. So if you were to make fries by frying it in tallow, that's fine. But if you fry it in seed oils, it is not fine. And the reason comes down to the stability of the fats. Saturated fats like tallow are extremely stable. They can withstand quite a bit of oxidative stress. Seed oils, on the other hand, are unstable. They have double bonds. These bonds can break down to oxidative stress. And this causes the oils to become toxic. And I have a whole video on seed oils already created. So if you want to watch that for more information, please do so. I'll link to it in the description or even have the card pop up as an end screen at the end of this video. The story of seed oils is a disgusting story of corporate greed and government subsidy. I'm simply not okay with putting industrial lubricant into my body despite what government organizations and the American Heart Association, which is a scam organization, have to say about the topic. Now coming back to microwaves. So don't store anything on top of the microwave because it will be affected by the radiation. So I went to my mom's house a month ago and she had vitamin D supplements on top of the microwave. And I just picked it up as the microwave was running. I was just heating some coffee or something. And I felt that it was warm, like really warm. And I realized that this vitamin D supplement was essentially going through hundreds of cycles of heating and cooling every time this microwave was switched on. So vitamin D supplements are kind of BS anyway. The soft gel tablets that it comes in, it's filled with seed oils. And the fact that my mom had placed it on top of the microwave and subjected it to countless cycles of heating and cooling made that toxic, so I tossed it out immediately. And speaking of vitamin D supplements, all I have to say about that topic is if you need vitamin D supplements, for example, if you are in a cold region and you don't get a lot of sunlight during the winter months, especially if you're dark skinned like I am, then it does actually make sense to have a 
supplement for vitamin D, but not the actual store-bought capsules. Instead, go for cod liver oil from a company that actually gets their sourcing from non-toxic fish. The one which I use is called Green Pasture. I've recommended it before. So I personally have been cutting down drastically on my use of the microwave oven. I've instead started using the convection oven. So what you do is just take your food, put it on your ceramic plate, set the convection oven for 375 degrees Fahrenheit, let the thing preheat and then you put your food in for about 10 to 12 minutes. You can absolutely put multiple plates of food in there if you're eating with your friends or family. So what if you have no option but to use a microwave oven? For example, if you pack your home cooked food and you take it to work and you only have the option of a microwave oven, what do you do? So here's some tips I can give you. First, make sure that you aren't leaving the food in there for more than one minute. So you can put the food in there for one minute and then take it out, stir it, flip it, move it, whatever it is, and then put it back for a second minute so that the heating is more even and it doesn't cause the creation of these toxins. And second, obviously, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. You already know not to use plastics in the microwave oven. So let's just leave it at that. And here's another thing. So on this channel, I've always taken the science of things, but I've also always looked at the context, the history of stuff. So when you look at the microwave oven, you realize that the biggest impact it had is not the toxicity. It's actually the social impact. It had an impact on the family structure, the family tradition. So when I was a kid, there was no option of a microwave oven. The food was hot when it was prepared. As soon as my mom had the food ready, she would call us down, me, my father, my sibling. We would join her and have a dinner together. The microwave oven changes that. It makes it such that people can have their meals independently. They can just go grab their food from the fridge, heat it up and have it at their own time. This concept of having meals alone is not human. It's not natural. The microwave oven has pulled families apart by destroying a central family tradition of having meals together. And this happened at the same time as when both parents had to work in order to make ends meet. And children spent far more time in their penitentiaries, which they call the public school system, instead of playing and enjoying nature, being with their parents, being with siblings and friends. But I suppose that's a topic for a different video. I do absolutely want to make a video on the education system and how to essentially deprogram the wiring which they gave us. So here's a challenge to you. If you're so invested in improving your life and avoiding toxins, the first step you can do to really make your life better is to fix your family relationships. Call your mom, call your dad, call your grandparents. Actually schedule a reminder on your phone, like for, for real, this is a high ROI task. Schedule a reminder on your phone for every single week. You talk to your grandparents and parents at least once a week. Imagine the health benefits that they're going to receive. Their stress is going to go lower, which genuinely has physiological effects on their body. The most honorable things you can do is to take care of your parents and honor your ancestors. And that's far more important than being scared of a microwave oven.